Is the Build Master card really the Chase Sapphire preferred killer? Well, in this video, I'm gonna compare these two cards side by side in six different categories so that you can get a better idea of which one best suits your needs. Now, as far as fees, neither of these cards have foreign transaction fees, which is exactly what we wanna see from travel credit cards. But what are these cards gonna cost us to hold? The Chase Sapphire Preferred does come with a $95 annual fee, which is charged when you first open the account and then every 12 months after that. The Built Master card, on the other hand, has no annual fee. Built is the clear winner in this category since I think we can all agree that no annual fee is better than a $95 annual fee. But the question we want answers to is does the Chase Sapphire Preferred provide enough value when compared to the completely free Built MasterCard? Let's start by talking about the elevated rewards categories that these cards offer. When we take a look at the Chase Sapphire Preferred's elevated earning categories, it seems like there's quite a few but let's go through them. First off, the highest earning category is gonna be for 5X points on travel that you purchase through Chase's travel portal. And this is gonna be 5X for any travel, which can include flights, hotels, or rental cars. Now, I can't really complain about getting 5X back, but you do wanna compare the prices on the portal versus booking direct to make sure you're getting the best value. I don't wanna see you book on Chase's portal to get 5X back, when you could have booked direct and saved even more than that. Now, the Built MasterCard also has a travel portal, but they don't typically offer additional points for using the travel portal compared to booking direct. However, they do offer something even better, which we'll get into in just a minute. Now, anything that codes as travel will earn you 2X Chase Ultimate Rewards points or 2X Built points per dollar spent respectively. All right, not groundbreaking, but certainly twice as good as 1X back. However, it must be noted that Chase's travel category is more generous than built. So you're gonna wanna determine how important that is to you. The most glaring differences I've noticed is that campgrounds, discount travel sites, travel agencies, toll bridges and highways, buses, passenger trains, ferries, parking lots, and garages are typically counted as travel with the Chase Sapphire Preferred, but are not included as travel with the Built MasterCard. Well, Josh, that sounds like a ton of stuff that's not included as travel with Built. Is anything actually covered? <laughs> yes, the things that are counted as travel with Built are things like airlines, hotels, motels, hotels, resorts, cruise lines, and rental car agencies. Now, vacation rental platforms like Verbo and Airbnb are not counted as travel with Built, but they are typically coded as travel with Chase. So, Ultimately, if you're someone who maybe lives in a major city and spends a significant amount of money on tolls and parking, Chase is a good option. But if you primarily care about the heavy hitters like direct bookings with airlines and hotels, then the Built card could be a great fit for you, especially since it's possible to get 4X points with Built. Now, both of these cards do have 3X categories. They both earn 3X back on dining and takeout, which can certainly be a significant category for some people. Now, the Chase Sapphire Preferred tax on a couple more 3X categories, including online grocery purchases and select streaming services. I personally have no use for the online grocery category. One, I like going and picking out my own food. And two, you're typically paying a premium for grocery delivery. But this is something that I'd imagine will vary wildly depending on the grocery store. At the end of the day, if you prefer online grocery shopping, the Sapphire Preferred certainly has the upper hand here since grocery spend is typically a high spend category for most people. And Chase, if you're listening, can we please get 3X back on all grocery spend? Thanks. Now, the 3X on streaming isn't something I'd get super excited about since the average household is spending less than $100 per month in this category. And as far as base earning rates, both of these cards will earn you 1X points per dollar spent on anything that doesn't fit into an elevated rewards category. However, the Built MasterCard offers two really unique things that, in my opinion, gives it the win for this category. The first thing is it gets 1X points on rent while being able to avoid the credit card processing fees. Now, you're able to avoid the processing fee because Built actually creates an account and routing number for you, which you can use to pay rent and rent related fees. In addition to that, if you pay your landlord via Venmo or PayPal or even a check, Built has you covered. And Built recently increased the number of points you can earn on rent payments from 50,000 all the way up to 100,000 points per year. So if you're paying an absurd amount of money on rent, you'll at least be able to earn a bunch of points from it. The second unique thing Built offers are rent day bonuses. If you make a purchase with your Built card on the first of the month, you'll earn double the points from all non-rent purchases. This means instead of 3X on dining, 2X on travel, and 1X on everything else, you'll be earning 6X, 4X, and 2X respectively. So if you're looking to book travel with the Built card, 
the first of the month is when you want to do it. Another fun little thing Belt's offering is the ability to win a free month of rent up to $2,500 in value by correctly answering the rent day challenge. On top of that, they've been hosting a rent day trivia challenge called Point Quest, which can earn you up to 350 additional Belt points for simply getting some trivia questions correct. Of course, the rent day challenge and the Point Quest trivia game are not things that are guaranteed with this card, and they can always be discontinued. Before I go any further, I have to mention that in order to earn points with the Built MasterCard, you need to make at least five transactions per statement period. And paying your rent actually does count as one, so it's really just four. In my humble opinion, this isn't a big deal since the card does have a nice dining multiplier, but if you're ever in a jam, you can always do some 50 cent Amazon or Apple reloads. Now, one unique factor about the Chase Sapphire Preferred is it offers a 10% point bonus on your total spend for the year, which is given to you annually. So for this, we'd simply add 0.1 points per dollar on each of the elevated categories. For instance, instead of 5X, 3X, 2X, and 1X, it'll be 5.1X, 3.1X, 2.1X, and 1.1X. It's a minor factor, but it all adds up. Another factor we must be aware of with the Sapphire Preferred is it has a $50 annual hotel credit when you book through Chase's travel portal. I'd highly recommend using this credit every single year so you can effectively reduce your annual fee from $95 down to $45. I personally used it last year to get $50 off a one night Marriott stay. Both of these cards have a couple additional partner benefits that I'm going to add into this rewards category. The Sapphire Preferred is offering an additional 3x points on lift rides through March 31st, 2025 which is in addition to the 2x points you already earn on travel, since Chase does count ride sharing as travel. Now for Built, they recently partnered with Lyft to bring you 2x points on Lyft rides when you simply link your Built and Lyft accounts, and then an additional 3x points when you pay for your Lyft rides with your Built MasterCard. Plus, on top of this, Lyft is offering a $5 Lyft credit when you use a World or World Elite MasterCard to take three rides in a month. So since the Built MasterCard is indeed a World Elite MasterCard, you can take advantage of this credit in addition to the additional point bonuses. Now, if you have both the Sapphire Preferred and the Built MasterCard, you can get the 2x loyalty points from linking your Lyft and Built accounts, and then use your Sapphire Preferred to get an additional 5x points on top of that. Now, something a little more niche that may or may not apply to you is Built's partnership with SoulCycle. If you book SoulCycle classes through your Built app, you're going to get 10x points on those purchases. And another exciting brand new addition to Built Rewards that seems to be rivaling Amex's Resi dining service is Built Dining. This is currently in select cities with plans to expand, and it allows you to earn up to 11 Built points per dollar spent at select restaurants. All you need to do is pay for your meal at an eligible restaurant with your Built wallet, and you're going to get 5x Built points. And that's 5x built points for simply using your built wallet to pay. The thing is, you can add virtually any credit card you want to your built wallet and also earn whatever dining multiplier that particular card offers. Now, using the built MasterCard in your built wallet is a nice option because you're going to earn 3x additional points on built dining, totaling 8x back. Or let's say you dine at one of these restaurants during rent day, the first of the month, you're going to get 5x from using your built wallet plus 6x from your dining multiplier for a grand total of 11x points. It's pretty evident that Built is aggressively pumping as much value as they possibly can into the reward system, and I'm here for it. So, the winner for this category is certainly not an easy decision, and that's because each of these cards offer unique benefits. But in my opinion, the overall point value you can get with the Built card outweighs the value you can get with the Sapphire Preferred for most people. So, one point for Built. Now for the factor that really entices people to sign up for particular credit cards, and that's the welcome bonus. The Chase Sapphire Preferred's welcome bonus fluctuates, but it's typically somewhere in the ballpark of 60,000 to 90,000 points when you spend around $4,000 in the first three months. This is significant to say the least and can provide well over $1,000 worth of value. And you can actually get the Sapphire Welcome Offer every 48 months. But since you can't have two Sapphire cards, you'd have to product change your Sapphire down to one of the Freedom cards in order to be eligible to open a new one. The Built MasterCard, on the other hand, well, it doesn't really have a welcome bonus at all. And they can get away with not offering one due to the whole earning points on rent thing. Now, at the time we're recording this video, the Sapphire Preferred has an in-branch offer of 90,000 bonus points, 80,000 bonus points when you spend $4,000 in the first three months, and then if you spend a total of $6,000 in the first six months, they'll give you an additional 10,000 bonus points. But if we take this and spread it out over
over the course of four years, which is how often you can actually get the bonus, you're talking about 22,500 points per year. The built card gets you 1x points on rent, and if we multiply that by the median rent cost, which is $1,937 per month, or $23,244 per year, that means we'd be earning 23,244 built points per year, or 92,976 built points over the course of four years. Now, this certainly muddies the waters of which card is gonna win this category, but in my opinion, Points today are worth more than points that we'll be earning in the future, which gives the Sapphire Preferred an upper hand. However, since that example was based on the median rent cost, if your particular rent is significantly cheaper than the median, the Sapphire Preferred's welcome bonus is definitely better. But if your rent is significantly higher than the median, the built card can provide some serious value. But also, when I got my built card, they did offer 5x points on non-rent purchases for the first five days of having the card. But honestly, I wasn't even expecting this welcome offer, so I didn't have any significant significant purchases pending. And your mileage may vary here, but if you happen to get this offer, the terms state that it's good for up to 50,000 bonus points, which equates to $10,000 worth of spent. Oh, and it does not stack with the other elevated earnings categories. I mean, it's better than nothing, but certainly not worth writing home about. For the welcome bonus category, the clear winner is the Chase Sapphire Preferred, since we can't really consider the additional points for rent as a welcome bonus. Now, these cards both offer some additional benefits travel insurances and stuff. Important stuff, stuff you may not ever use, but you really wanna at least have a general knowledge of what you have available to you in case you do need it down the road. Both cards have primary auto rental collision damage waiver, except for built card holders who reside in New York, where it'll be secondary coverage. These cards have slightly different stipulations for this protection, but ultimately you'll get coverage for the damage to your rental vehicle that's caused by an accident, natural disaster, vandalism, or theft. And this coverage will also include loss of use, reasonable towing expenses related to a valid claim, and administrative fees. Overall, I'd say this coverage is a tie between the two cards, unless of course you live in New York, then the Sapphire Preferred gets the win. The built card provides $800 worth of cell phone protection with a $25 deductible while the Sapphire Preferred has no cell phone protection. The Sapphire Preferred does come with baggage delay insurance, which will get you up to $100 per day, up to a maximum of five days. And this benefit only applies if your baggage is delayed for more than six hours. Now this is gonna cover things like clothing, toiletries, and up to one charger per electronic device. The built MasterCard on the other hand does not include this insurance. The Sapphire Preferred does have extended warranty protection, which tacks on one additional year of coverage for for eligible warranties of three years or less. And it covers you up to a maximum of $10,000 per claim and $50,000 per account. The built card on the other hand does not include extended warranty protection. However, what the built card does include is purchase protection of 90 days from the date of purchase, and it covers the cost to repair or replace the item as long as you used your built card for the entire purchase. It provides $10,000 worth of coverage per item. Now the Chase Sapphire Preferred provides 120 days of purchase protection, but you're limited to $500 per claim. However, you only have to purchase a portion of the item with your Sapphire Preferred to be covered. But there's a ton of stipulations that you do wanna skim through to make sure that your particular item is actually covered. For instance, if I purchase this exotic Monstera Albo with either of these cards, and let's say Russia invades and then breaks into my house and kills this plant with a flamethrower, I'm gonna be SOL. And that's actually for two reasons. One, these purchase protections typically don't cover live plants. And two, they typically don't cover loss from acts of war. So for purchase protection, it's gonna be a tie between these cards because you get a higher per claim maximum with the built card, but you get a longer length of coverage with the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Now, lost luggage reimbursement. The Chase Sapphire Preferred includes this benefit, but the Built MasterCard does not. This coverage will apply when your check bag, carry-on, and or personal property that you had inside of your baggage is lost, damaged, or stolen. This reimbursement is capped at $3,000 per covered person per trip, and it'll pay out the difference between the actual cash value of your stuff versus any reimbursement that the common carrier is providing you. Next is travel accident insurance. 
The Sapphire Preferred does have this benefit and you'll get up to $500,000 worth of coverage. This is the type of insurance you use when you're having a really bad day. The Built MasterCard does not include this insurance, so it's a win for the Sapphire Preferred here. But there's two more benefits that you're much more likely to actually use at some point, so let's briefly cover those. Trip cancellation slash interruption insurance. Both of these cards do include trip cancellation and interruption protection, with the Sapphire Preferred covering you up to $10,000 dollars per covered person and up to twenty thousand dollars per trip the built mastercard will get you up to five thousand dollars worth of coverage per covered traveler per trip with no overall maximum on face value it may seem that the sapphire preferred is the winner here but the built mastercard could technically provide you with more coverage if your trip consists of more than four people i'm going to give the win to the chase sapphire preferred here since it's likely the better insurance for most people trip delay reimbursement is one that you may very well need to take advantage of at some point in your life both of these cards do offer this reimbursement and it's meant to cover things like meals lodging toiletries and medication the sapphire preferred provides up to $500 for each ticket and it kicks in for eligible delays of at least 12 hours. The built card provides $200 per day per covered traveler for up to three days with a maximum total coverage of $1,800. So not as much coverage, but the coverage kicks in when the delay is at least six hours and not 12 hours like the Sapphire Preferred. In my opinion, the usefulness of this reimbursement is much better with the built card. I actually experienced a nine hour delay last year and since I had booked the flight with my Sapphire Preferred, I wasn't covered for anything. But if I had used the built MasterCard, I would have gotten up to $200 worth of reimbursement. So the point goes to built. Additionally, with the Sapphire Preferred, you'll get a complimentary Dash Pass subscription for a minimum of one year if you activate by December 31st, 2024. You're also going to get a six month Instacart Plus subscription. Additionally, you'll get a $10 monthly statement credit from GoPuff through December 31st, 2023. And this card also gives you access to Chase offers, which can be hit or miss depending on whether or not you actually shop at the retailers that they partner with. The overall winner for the benefits category is going to be the Chase Sapphire Preferred. However, do not overlook the Built MasterCard's benefits, especially since it's a no annual fee credit card. Earning points is great and all. But what are these points actually worth? What can I actually use them for? Well, Chase Ultimate Rewards points and Built points are worth roughly the same amount. The thing that surprised most people about the Built card is that they were able to secure Hyatt as a transfer partner, especially being that they're a no annual fee credit card. Now, Hyatt is a partner that the Sapphire Preferred also has, and both of these cards do have a one-to-one -one transfer ratio with them. If you're familiar with Hyatt point redemptions, you know that you can generally squeeze at least two cents per point worth of value from them. Now, this is all well and good, but not everyone wants to use their points for Hyatt, and I get it. Both of these cards have 14 different transfer partners to choose from, with 10 of them overlapping with each other. If transferring points is the route you want to go, this could potentially sway your decision one way or the other, and this is because while Chase and Bilt do share 10 transfer partners, they actually have four partners that are unique to them. For instance, if you really like staying at Marriott properties, you may prefer earning Chase points, while if American Airlines is your airline of choice, built points are going to be more beneficial for you. One benefit the built MasterCard has over the Sapphire Preferred is you can actually go right in the built app under the travel tab and click travel partners. And from there, you can actually enter your departure and destination plus your travel dates. And the built app will search through their transfer partners to find you the best value. This is because built recently partnered with point.me, which is a service that helps people find the most value from their points. So having point.me built into the built app is kind of incredible. It makes things a lot simpler and at the end of the day it saves you time and by the way point.me is not a free service so having access to it at least for built transfer partners is a really nice feature but if you don't want to deal with transfer partners the built card and the sapphire preferred are going to get you 1.25 cents per point if you decide to use your points to book travel through their respective travel portals. If you want to learn a bit more about point redemption through these two cards, I do include them in my dedicated card reviews. But overall, I'm leaning more towards giving Built the win in this category, but I'll say it's a tie. Our next category is card design, which is going to have four subcategories. Appearance, weight, slappability, and unboxing experience. Let's start with the Built MasterCard. Now, appearance will certainly be subjective, but let's take a look at the features. 
It has a blacked out design with the built wording, the built block, and the MasterCard name and logo all laser etched. Even the back of the card is sleek with black on black text for the card numbers, expiration date, and CVC. There's no signature pad on this card, which is a nice touch since they're no longer required. By comparison, the Chase Sapphire Preferred looks... dumpy. Every time I look at it, it reminds me of third grade picture day with those retro laser backgrounds. But the disappointing thing about the appearance is everything is simply printed on. No laser etching to be found. And the backside of the card does include a signature pad like we're living in the dark ages of 2012. Built evidently wins the appearance subcategory by a long shot. Next, we have card weight. First of all, both these cards are metal cards. But first, let's place the built card on the scale and see what we got. Sixteen grams, solid. And next up, we'll place the sapphire preferred on the scale. And we have twelve grams. In the credit card world, heavier is always better, giving the win to built. But how do they slapping? Whew. Built has that metallic slap. Kind of reminds me of working out in the oil rig. I've never worked on an oil rig. <laughs> I gotta give the Built card a 9.8 out of 10. It's really close to perfection. Now for the Sapphire Preferred. This card has a respectable slap, but it's just simply not on the same level as the Built card. I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10. Another point for Built. Now, the unboxing experience with these two cards is night and day. Chase stuffs everything in an envelope and says, here you go. And on top of that, they have a customer service rep leave you a voicemail where they're just yelling profanities at you. Okay, I may have fabricated a portion of that, but overall, it's an uneventful unboxing experience. The Built card, on the other hand, they put some serious effort into designing their unboxing experience. Not to mention, it's an actual box. I mean, just look at it. Why don't you just look out. at it? Not only does Bill get the unboxing subcategory point, but they also win the overall card design category by a landslide. So it's a pretty close call with both of these cards offering some unique benefits, but for me, the Bill card is the winner. Not by a lot though. Depending on your particular spend situation and how much value you'll get out of those travel benefits, you may very well choose one over the other. I mean, for me, I have both cards. I've been holding the Chase Sapphire Preferred for about three years now, and honestly, there's really no downside to having the built card in addition to it since it has no annual fee. And yes, the Sapphire Preferred's value can also be amplified by getting both the Freedom Flex and the Freedom Unlimited, but I wanted to keep this video a comparison of the two standalone cards. Now, if you want to see how my built MasterCard application turned out, check out this video. It was a bit of a roller coaster. Thanks for watching. Peace.